We're going to start with major breaking news when it comes to Donald Trump's legal challenges. Mr. Trump has just asked the U.S. Supreme Court to weigh in on the issue of presidential immunity, whether he is immune from facing charges for any alleged crimes he committed while he was president. Mr. Trump wants to, the justices to temporarily block a, a scathing decision handed down by the D.C. Circuit Court last week, uh, one that flatly rejected his claims of immunity in the federal election subversion case, one that differentiated between President Trump and citizen Trump. Let's get straight to CNN Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Paula Reed. Paula, uh, tell us what's going on. Well, as you just laid it out, Jake, he is asking the Supreme Court to pause that appeals court ruling that found that he did not have immunity that would block him from being prosecuted at the federal level by special counsel Jack Smith on charges related to election subversion. Now, if you talk to sources in and around the Trump legal team or legal experts, they all agree this is not one of his stronger arguments. They don't expect that ultimately he will prevail, uh, be granted immunity and be shielded from this prosecution. So the Trump strategy, as much as it is about defending uh, their client's rights, they're also just trying to delay this trial, the federal election subversion trial, until after the November 2024 election. And they are using every possible option available to them and trying to exercise each one mostly to just delay, push this back as long as they can. So today they're asking the Supreme Court to pause that lower court ruling. They also intend to file a full appeal to the Supreme Court. Now they also might also go back down to the appeals court and ask the full court to hear this decision. Last week, that scathing unanimous opinion you referenced, that was by three judges, but he technically has the option to ask a full panel of the DC Circuit Court to hear this as well. Again, there isn't an expectation uh, that he would prevail, but it could be an option to delay this a little bit longer. So now all eyes are on the Supreme Court, not even so much for what they're going to do, but how long it takes them to do it. Because every day, every week that passes, that gets closer and closer to the election and makes it harder for the special counsel, Jack Smith, to bring this case. Now, the Supreme Court also in a unique position right now. They are having to contemplate two big cases related to former President Trump, either one of which could have an enormous impact on the election. Of course, last week they heard oral arguments from Trump's lawyers and a lawyer for voters in Colorado about whether Trump should appear on the ballot. And now they're also looking at this question of presidential immunity. And it's not so much about immunity as it is about timing, how long it takes them to give them a final answer on exactly what they're going to do here, because that would then give Jack Smith and former President Trump clarity on whether or not this case can even go before November. All right, Paula Reed, stick around. Uh, let's turn now to the other federal case against the former president that is rearing its head today related to his handling or mishandling of classified documents. CNN's Evan Pettis is in Fort Pierce, Florida right now. And Evan, Mr. Trump and his lawyers were in federal court today arguing in Florida that they deserve more access to evidence. Tell us about that. That's right, Jake. This was a hearing that was behind closed doors. It was in secret uh, because it has to do with classified documents. This is, of course, uh, at the center of this case that has been brought against the former president uh, for mis allegedly mishandling classified documents uh, at Mar-a-Lago. Now, uh, what he was here, he was here with, uh, with his lawyers meeting with the judge for about five hours uh, earlier today. Right now, uh, we believe the, uh, the special counsel and his team, uh, the, the government's uh, lawyers, are in there now having their turn talking to the judge. At issue, as you pointed out, is access to classified documents. In some cases, uh, documents that the government says are so sensitive to national security that they're only producing uh, summaries of some of those documents. And of course, Trump's team is arguing that he should be able to see all of it, including things, anything that has to do uh, that could help his, of course, his defense. Uh, as, you, as you noted, uh, uh, Jake, you know, this is also about the timing because when we, we don't know when we're going to hear from this judge, but certainly in the next few weeks, there are going to be a, key, uh, a number of key motions by both sides that will determine whether this May schedule that the judge has set for a possible trial in the Mar-a-Lago case, whether that really stays on the calendar. The former president didn't speak to anybody when he came in. He did wave to a crowd of supporters. We saw the campaign handing out signs to some of those supporters outside the court, Jake. All right, Evan, stick around. Paula, stick around. Let me bring in CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig into this conversation. Ellie, let me start with you, and let's begin with Trump's immunity claim. What are the different ways this could play out with the U.S. Supreme Court? What happens next?
So, Jake, there's a lot of procedure happening here, but the real world impact is this is almost certainly going to dictate whether Donald Trump faces trial on Jack Smith's election case before or after the 2024 election. Now, what Donald Trump's team has just asked the Supreme Court to do is issue a stay, which is essentially a pause, saying everything should be put on pause so we can pursue our full appellate rights in the Court of Appeals and then the Supreme Court. That would ordinarily take many, many months. And so the question is really, first of all, Will the Supreme Court issue that stay, that pause? I think they will at least for a limited time so they can decide this question. But the bigger question is, will the Supreme Court ultimately take this case? If they do not take the case, it's gonna go back down to the district court and I think we're very likely looking at a trial this summer. But if they do take this case and they set it on something close to a normal schedule, I think in all likelihood that would push the timeline here out until after the 2024 election. So that's how big the stakes are with this motion. And Paula, how quickly are we going to hear from the U.S. Supreme Court? It's unclear, Jake. I mean, it could take them a couple of days, could take them a couple of weeks. And we know there is likely some choreography here. They are currently considering this question of ballot eligibility. Oral arguments went very well for Trump's lawyers last week. It is widely expected that he will win on that case. But again, like I said, even sources close to the former president acknowledge that the immunity case is not as strong. Many of them don't expect the Supreme Court to take it up. And even if they did, they don't expect him to win. So watching closely to see if, especially mindful of the optics, the Supreme Court under a lot of scrutiny for questions about partisanship, if they try to release these decisions uh, close to one another, maybe a win and a loss for Trump. And Ali, let's turn now to the other case, Special Counsel Jack Smith's uh, case against Trump in Florida having to do with classified documents. Uh, the evidence that contains this classified material is further complicating this case. Ellie, explain why, and could that impact the trial timing? Yeah, I think it will, Jake. So in an ordinary criminal prosecution, prosecutors have an obligation to turn over their evidence, their documents, their witness statements as early as possible. Certainly they would be doing that by now in the Mar-a-Lago case. But the complication is that case involves all, all sorts of classified documents. And there's a special set of laws that apply in a scenario like this, because typically the government, the prosecutors here, want to limit the types of classified information that they're turning over to the defendant, in this case, Donald Trump. And so that's what today's sort of all day long negotiating session was about. How exactly are prosecutors going to turn this information over to Trump? How much of the classified information does he get to receive in the course of what we call discovery? And that inherently slows things down. So this case is currently set for trial in late May, but but I think it's very likely that this complication will push that date out quite a bit. Evan, I want to invite you to do a little fact check uh, for our viewers here because Donald Trump spoke about the classified documents case uh, over the weekend at his rally in South Carolina. Take a listen. They didn't see the ones we had. We had them locked up and we had Secret Service all the time because I was president all the time. So were the classified documents Donald Trump had locked up and was he president, so there was Secret Service all over the place? Well, look, the, the, the compound is protected by, by Secret Service, but the issue that is at center of this case is the fact that, uh, you know, there are members of this private club who had full access to all parts of it. Uh, one of the things that you saw in the, the court documents when the former president was charged, Jake, you saw uh, documents being... Uh, being held in a uh, in a bathroom, in ballrooms, uh, places where the public could go, and so that's one of the issues that uh, certainly led to the charges that you saw, the mishandling charges that the former president faces. And of course, you have to remember that this case goes beyond the documents; it goes into the obstruction. The former president is accused of not only refusing to turn over documents uh, after uh, receiving a subpoena, but also. Uh, uh, basically telling people, some of his co-defendants, to lie to the, to the FBI. So that's what the, the charge that the former president faces, and that's why, you know, the case is so much worse, frankly, than, the, what, than you saw the uh, investigation of Joe Biden and the documents he had. All right. Thanks, everyone.